Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a diagonal pleated and we're going to incline ice dye it. For this project, I start by centering the shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. And using a washable marker, I mark out the center points. And then I tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, and I line up the seams in the underarm and along the shoulder. And then I find those marks that I made and I give them a little pinch and a shake. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt together for symmetry. You want to get everything lined up the best that you can, smooth out as many wrinkles as possible. This is the foundation for your tie dye, so you want to take your time and get this step right. Next I'm going to fold the shirt from the bottom up to the top, and I'm using my yardstick just to create a nice straight edge. Now ignore all those marks on there, the shirt was going to be something else. Now I'm going to create a diamond pattern. So if you go up over the collar, so down from the bottom right up over the collar, it's going to create a diamond in the center. If I was to go from the center up over the shoulder, it would create an X pattern. And now what I'm doing is I'm marking out my pattern every four inches. This is not a necessary step. It's something that I like to do because when I'm pleating, it helps me make those lines nice and straight. This shirt is a Port & Company brand and it's a nice thick shirt and it's a women's size 3X. So there's a lot of fabric here and it's folded over in such a way to where there's four layers of fabric. So I'm making these pleats an inch tall. It's just a lot easier to pleat up. And I find that if I start in a little ways, it's also a lot easier to pleat. If I get going right on the edge, it doesn't quite work out. So try that and see if it works for you. For this project, I'm going to secure it with my second favorite rubber bands. They're the perfect size for a project like this. You want them to be snug, but you don't want your rubber bands to be so tight that the fabric buckles. Also, since it's going to be an incline ice dye, I want to get some good dye flows down in the channel. This rubber band is just a little bit too loose, so I'm going to go down a size and use my baby hair rubber bands. And I should also mention that you could use kite string. It really is just a matter of preference. I like to use rubber bands as often as possible just because they're quick and easy. Just for reference, the left side of the screen is the center point of the shirt and the right side of the screen is the sleeve. I want to have this shirt at an incline where all of the dye is flowing towards the center of the shirt. So that's the way I've placed it down in my gutter. So now the left part of the screen is the sleeve and the right part of the screen is the center point of the shirt.
This is kind of an unusual color palette, something that I don't normally put together. However, I do like purple and green together. I think it's a great color combination, but we do run the risk of getting brown. And we should stop being so afraid of getting brown. A little bit of brown is okay. Although I did put the Palomino Gold in between the Amethyst and the Lime Pop just to try to bridge the gap in between the purples and the greens. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And I use a piece of foil down at the bottom to catch the ice. And I got the idea from watching Goyo's Garden and Tie Dye. And it's such a genius idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. In the past, you guys have seen me use my dye towel. The foil is much better because you can just toss it away instead of having to wash a dye towel. And then also I have found that if you put the ice on your project while it's laying flat, it's just so much easier. That way the ice going on the shirt doesn't knock the dye loose and have it roll downhill and get all over the place. Off camera in front of the gutter, I tidied up a little bit. I don't wanna set my tote down and all that dye in ice water, because I take my projects in the house and I don't want to set the tote down on my table and you know make a mess. So now I've just created the incline. So one end of the gutter is down at the bottom of the tote and the other one is hanging up over the edge. And then I let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. Notice how the back of the shirt is mostly purple. That's the part that was laying flat against the gutter and it creates those nice muck lines. So when you open it up, you're gonna have those pretty purple streaks going down your shirt. All right, now it's time for the rinse out. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirilon and it's usually about two hot water cycles. On the second cycle, I check the hot water, and if that's pretty much clear, I know that I'm ready for my third hot water cycle using Millsoft, and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener, and I get Kirilon and Millsoft from Dharma Trading Company. And then I put it in the dryer, and I'll iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our diagonal pleated incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I think this shirt turned out pretty cool. I like the way that the lime squeeze is like glowing from within. And then the purple streaks that go down it go from purple into green. Those are those muck lines. That was the part that was laying flat against the gutter. And I just, you know, like to play around with weird color combinations. You just never really know what you're going to get. I don't know, in hindsight, if I'd put the green in the center, I'd maybe choose something different. But, you know, you don't know unless you try. And then here, Bella is wearing it. And on her, it looks like a nightgown because I think she's like a size negative zero. But it always looks different on the body than it does laying flat. So what do you guys think? 
please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.